Today we'll cover the stock MicroStrategy, ticker MSTR, traded on the NASDAQ. I'll try to explain in my words how powerful this stock is, the link between MicroStrategy and Bitcoin, and how it has performed extremely well in the recent years since they started buying Bitcoin, but also what is expected in the future, as I believe this stock has a lot of potential. As you can see here on the chart, the five-year performance of MicroStrategy has been over 1,000%. Quite a return for investors who do a little bit of research on the asset and understand how powerful it is. Before we move forward with the MicroStrategy analysis, I just wanted to cover a little bit about the United States money supply. It's called M2, and that's the amount of US dollars being generated, printed by the US government that dilutes the value of the US dollar. As you see, almost $21,000 billion have been printed, and since pandemic, it has accelerated an impressive amount. This printing of M2, the only thing that you need to understand is that, is that Every time the U.S. government prints money, debases the currency of the U.S. dollar and lower your buying power per dollar that you get on your pay or out of your business. So the U.S. dollar is constantly diluting the value of your dollar without even asking you. And you have to find a way to counterbalance that in order to be able to afford and buy all the items that you need for your everyday life or to survive in this economy. The US dollar has lost 99.9% .9 of its value in recent years due to this debasement and money printing happening with the US dollar. The debt of the US has also been growing at an exponential rate and the government will have to issue more money, increase the M2 in order to pay the interest on that debt. So this trend is not stopping. It will most probably accelerate and therefore you need to find a way to counter this debasement, this lower buying power of the US dollar. And keep in mind the US dollar is the reference currency for the world. If the US dollar is the base, all other currencies around the world are automatically debased also because they use it as a reference currency. This news opened my eyes to Bitcoin in 2020 and that was in August of 2020 when MicroStrategy became the first listed company to buy Bitcoin as part of its capital allocation strategy. That day MicroStrategy started buying Bitcoin and adding it to its balance sheet a very important date that completely changed the course of this company as you will see in its performance once we go to the charts but its fundamentals as to how incorporating Bitcoin as part of the balance sheet brings a lot of value to MicroStrategy. Now let's have a look at the issuance of Bitcoin tokens since inception to May 13, 2024 few days ago and as you can see Bitcoin total issuance of tokens as per the code will be 21 million Bitcoin no more no less and that is embedded in the Bitcoin protocol it cannot be modified as of May 12 2024 we are at 19.7 million Bitcoin issued. So until the end of the issuance of Bitcoin, we still have 1.3 million Bitcoin to be issued. No more, no less. So when I just talked about the M2 supply of the US, which is increasing exponentially because the government has the power to issue more money, print more money, and dilute your buying power when Bitcoin you cannot do that the set supply has been established it cannot be modified it will not be modified and we are capped 
at 21 million. Therefore, there's no debasement possible beyond the small dilution that we have to tolerate from here till the last Satoshi that will be mined as per the protocol. But actually, in reality, Bitcoin is deflationary, meaning its supply goes down, actually, and not is set at 21 million. And I'll explain a few reasons why. First of all, five or six million Bitcoin have been estimated to have been lost forever, meaning people died without sharing their work phrases and their access to their Bitcoin. Computers were thrown away. Accounts had been lost. People have sent Bitcoin to wrong addresses when they transfer money. All kinds of errors have happened so that 5 million or 6 million Bitcoin have been lost forever. Every single month, people lose Satoshis, fractions of Bitcoin, every single month. Therefore, the supply is going down. It's not going up like the M2 supply. That's the first deflationary aspect. The second one is that a large percentage of holders of Bitcoin invest for long periods of time. Many have not touched their coins for three years, five years, even some 10 years. So those Satoshis or those Bitcoin are not available to be traded, to be sold. And therefore, it brings down the supply. That's the second way of looking at it in a deflationary aspect. Every single time, and the, the final one is every single time somebody new buys Bitcoin, it's another person taking Satoshis and Bitcoin out of the supply from the people who have had already been keeping Bitcoin for themselves. So the more adoption or the more new people come in the system, the scarces Bitcoin become. It becomes rarer because there's a lot more people coming in and buying fractions, even if it's fractions, even if it's $50, $100, $10. That $10 is not available for the next person who tries to buy Bitcoin. The price now is around $67,000, $68,000. And what will happen when the price is at $100,000? More people will want to come in. What happens when it's at $200,000? more and more people. As the value of Bitcoin goes up, more and more people will want to invest and put their money in Bitcoin. And therefore, there's going to be problem of availability of Satoshis, parts, fractions of Bitcoin for people who want to buy the asset because there's not a lot of people who want to sell. There's approximately 1 million Bitcoin that are are available in exchanges to be bought but that's a very little amount for the whole planet and therefore if there's a big surge in people coming in to buy the asset it could push the price extremely high because the sellers will have the power to set the price for future buyers of Bitcoin. Keep in mind that not every millionaire in the world has Bitcoin in their balance sheet or has bought Bitcoin. And there's more millionaires than there's Bitcoins available as a total amount. The number of millionaires in the world is greater than 21 million Bitcoin. So even if each individual millionaire would want to own one Bitcoin each, there's not enough Bitcoin for everybody. So that alone can tell you how scarce and how rare having Bitcoin is for your portfolio. So you have the M2 going up and Bitcoin scarcity going down. Now let's have a look at this Reddit post that explains a little bit powerful strategy for MicroStrategy as the infinite money glitch. So MicroStrategy will sell equity, sell shares, or take out loan in US dollar. As we just saw, the US dollar is going down in value because it's been printed more and more by the government. So MicroStrategy either issues shares or takes out a loan in US dollars from the value of the company at an interest rate that is quite low 
for the next five years or, or the next 10 years. So it has the big loan, takes in all the cash and buys Bitcoin, adds it to its balance sheet and Bitcoin is a scarce asset. There's less and less available and therefore the value over time, not every single day, over time, the value goes up. So when that Bitcoin is bought to MicroStrategy, it's been added to its balance sheet. Therefore, the Bitcoin price goes up, MicroStrategy stock value goes up, and then eventually MicroStrategy will issue another batch of equity or another loan later on. When they do this selling of equity, take out a loan, the stock temporarily goes down in value, they get the cash from the loan and buy more Bitcoin. So they're taking the US dollar who is going down in value and shifting the money into an asset, Bitcoin, who's going up in value. And I'll read exactly what is present here in the Reddit post to explain the whole thing. If MicroStrategy bought Bitcoin once, it would be something like the Bitcoin ETF. But since he keeps buying Bitcoin, it's like a leveraged Bitcoin stock where it outpaces Bitcoin because the fund continues to acquire more and more Bitcoin. The crazy thing is that it keeps going till Bitcoin prices flattens out as a store of value. That's in the future. How high Bitcoin value will be, nobody knows. This money glitch only works because Bitcoin goes up in value and is extremely scarce. So the thing is, you and I, the small investors, do not have access to infinite capital amount of money, but MicroStrategy does. And as Bitcoin price goes up, it gets more access to capital. Its feedback loop just keeps generating money. On top of that, very soon, MicroStrategy will qualify to be part of the S&P 500, the 500 biggest companies in the US, meaning people will passively have to buy MicroStrategy shares because the S&P 500 index is present in all kinds of ETF. And this buying pressure will push the price up of MicroStrategy. And when they issue shares, in the future, they will be able to issue it at a higher price, therefore getting a lot more cash to buy more Bitcoin. So it's like a Bitcoin fund that takes money from shareholders, shareholders, put it into Bitcoin, and it generates more wealth than just the Bitcoin itself. But it also takes a debased currency, the US dollar, and put it in an asset that goes up price. This is the big takeaway of the MicroStrategy glitch. Not only MicroStrategy will qualify to be listed in the S&P 500, but it also this week we got the news that MicroStrategy will join the MSCI World Index as of 31st of May 2024. So MicroStrategy will be added to this index and this addition will trigger buying of MicroStrategy. It has already started. People are front running this and buying MicroStrategy stock because it will be added to this MSCI World Index. So there's a lot of ways that MicroStrategy right now is attracting buyers of the stock, investors who lend money to them to feed its money glitch and the last thing i would say related to the money glitch is that microstrategy has issued debt that they will pay in five years of 10 or 10 years and they will obtain it with a low interest rate but not only they have a low interest rate on their loan but they will have to pay it back five years 10 years from now and what do you think will happen to the value of the us dollar in the next five, 10 years. During that period, the amount of people buying Bitcoin will increase. Therefore, scarcity of Bitcoin will be even higher and therefore the price of Bitcoin will be higher. So it means that when MicroStrategy will have to pay back that loan, they will pay a fraction of what they bought. 
because they will have to either issue shares of MicroStrategy at a much higher price in value, pay back that loan, or they will sell a little bit of their Bitcoin position to pay back those loans and all the remaining value of the price appreciation in five to 10 years of Bitcoin will stay within the company. So that's how powerful the micro strategy strategy is. Not a lot of people understand it, but it's clear to me that price of the shares will only go up and they will accelerate as more Bitcoin is added to the balance sheet of the company. So here's a chart that shows the stock price of MicroStrategy versus the Bitcoin performance and the Nasdaq performance since MicroStrategy bought its first Bitcoin on August 11, 2020. And as you can see in the chart, during that period, the Nasdaq returned 50%. The Bitcoin returns are 499% and MicroStrategy's returns have been 889%. As we move forward, this accelerated return will increase every single time MicroStrategy decides to add a more Bitcoin to its balance sheet. This separation between the performance of Bitcoin and MicroStrategy will get larger and larger as they add up more Bitcoin to their balance sheet. And this is extremely powerful if you have a conviction that Bitcoin will perform well for the next 5, 10, 20 years. And for me, that's the case. I think it's the best performing asset right now in the market. Everybody needs to have a little piece of Bitcoin, not financial advice. I own a little bit of Bitcoin, not enough. Fortunately, but I'm trying to accumulate as much as I can. I started just before the last peak of $72,000, $73,000 investing in Bitcoin. I have bought multiple times and I have not sold one Satoshi. Every time I buy, I think those Satoshis will potentially never be sold. At least mine. I don't know what other people will do, but that's how I see things because it's in a special asset. MicroStrategy is in a special asset. I own a few shares of MicroStrategy also because I want to participate in that exponential return growth curve that I'm expecting for the stock. And finally, this is the chart, the weekly chart for MicroStrategy. The recent price action has been just spectacular from a little above $400 up to a peak of $2,000. We corrected back to $1,200, which seems to be a great support. And now we're bouncing already at $1,585 and going towards $1,800. But I'm sure we'll get to $2,000, $2,200 very quickly and beyond. How high MicroStrategy will go, I have absolutely no idea. But one thing that I'm convinced is that it's going higher from here a lot. So I hope this video gives you a better perspective of what MicroStrategy is, what it's link to M2 money supply of the US dollar, and also what it's link to Bitcoin and how this loop generates value for shareholders of MicroStrategy and investors in Bitcoin. So I hope you watch till the end because this is all very critical information. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Keep investing, keep getting informed, do your research and identify stocks that will change your life in the next year, in the next five years, in the next 10 years. MicroStrategy will be one of the performing stocks in the stock market. See you all very soon.